Hi there. Today we're going to be talking about a pressure switch fault on uh, any carrier, Bryant, Payne furnace. They're all going to be pretty much the same. And today we're going to talk about the pressure switch fault on that particular furnace. So if your furnace looks similar to this with the one big door, uh, it's not working obviously or you wouldn't be down here. So I'm going to pull the door off. And before you go any further, you are going to look for the little window in the bottom half of the furnace. It's got the LED light through there that you can see, and it will be blinking something, giving you a fault code. Before you do anything, Check that and count the number of flashes. Then you're going to look for your, on the inside of the door or your manual of the furnace, your service status LED code um, sheet that tells you what things mean. So if you're getting the 3 1, which is right there, pressure, draft, safeguard, or auxiliary limit, a very common call on this furnace is a plug plug drain line or drain trap. That drain trap looks like that. It's mounted on the side of this particular furnace. And <clears throat> what happens is that just plugs up. So if you are getting the 3-1, um, first of all, your inducer motor needs to be running in order to close the pressure switch, which is right here. Uh, another this is one of the first furnaces made. This is a 1994 furnace. And this furnace was made up until about probably 2005 or 10, probably 2010. And the, the newer ones are going to look like this. Your inducer went from that to this. Pressure switch again. Um, so this should be spinning or you're not going to be able to close the pressure switch. So... If that's not spinning, you may not have the board sending voltage to the motor, or the motor could just plain be burned out. You've also got a capacitor on this particular model here. Up here, it's mounted in the same position. So anyway, if that motor is spinning, um, sometimes you can hear gurgling in there, which would definitely point towards the plugged drain trap. So <clears throat> if you hear gurgling, Shut the power off to the unit. Um, you're going to want to pull that trap out. Um, that bigger hose in the back is typically the one that's going to be full of water. So make sure you have a bucket handy. So when you pull that off the trap, you're probably going to get a half a gallon of water out of there. So <clears throat> when you pull that off, pull it right to the front here. Obviously, there's clamps on there that you'll have to loosen and hold your bucket right there while the, the water drains out of it. Pull off your other tubing um, and then get that trap off of there. A lot of times it's mounted through the deck of the furnace, so you have to take off this lower door as well because that'll be sticking through this deck right here down into the bottom into the blower compartment so once you got this off it's full of water obviously take it to a sink and fill it up several times with hot water slosh it around and <clears throat> clean it out real good put it back together that's a very common problem with this furnace if you've got the newer model it's gonna it's gonna be mounted like this that little short tubing will Be on there and it'll be going down through the deck of that furnace as I said before. So put that all back together. Now other pressure switch faults could be caused by improper installation. Um, you've got your exhaust tubing which comes out the side of the furnace there. And then you've got intake tubing that would come here. Sometimes we get You know, a mouse has crawled in that pipe from the outside, and there's a mouse nest somewhere 
you know, between here and where it exits the house in the winter time, that tubing could be frosted over, <clears throat> could have bats or birds in there. So if you can pull that pipe off of there, get it out of the way enough to, well, you'll be able to tell if there's a bird in there because this won't spin like that. And you can see when you spin this, it, it keeps on going. I'll, uh, another common problem with this furnace is the fact that that metal right there has that that impeller wheel is molded right to it and a lot of times very common that will break off of there so your motor is spinning but the impeller is not spinning inside there so <clears throat> If that's the problem, you can get that impeller. It's a lot more laborious. It's a lot cheaper uh, to just replace that, that impeller than to do the whole assembly here. But you can, you know, pop these four screws, take that out, and just replace the impeller on the shaft of that motor. So that's another common problem. Uh, Installation-wise... Oh, if you do suspect that your piping is blocked, what I like to do is hook a vacuum cleaner in the blow position down here in the basement and, and blow out of the pipe. A lot of times that mouse nest will blast out with a vacuum cleaner pressure. So if you do have um, a plugged intake pipe, what you can typically do is just pull the pipe off of you know, the, the part where the intake attaches to the furnace. Once you separate that from there, uh, if you do have a plugged intake pipe, your furnace is immediately going to turn on the igniter, which is in there. You'll see it glowing orange. And um, that would indicate, if it starts up when you pull that off of there, that would definitely indicate that you've got a plugged intake pipe. So... And then back to installation. Always follow the manufacturer's installation guidelines in the in installation manual. And, um, you know, sizing and length of pipes will cause pressure switch faults. If your furnace has been in there for, for years and never had any problems, then that's probably not the problem. Um, so this is a 90 plus percent efficient carrier, Bryant, or Payne, built between 1994 approximately and somewhere around 2010. So, hopefully, that's been some help for you. The other issue, sometimes people, you know, just the drain line coming out of the trap could be plugged too. So, this is the exit hole right here that goes down your floor drain or a, a condensate pump, um, which may be having problems as well. If you've got a condensate pump, make sure that's running should come on it's float controlled and it pumps the water up so if it does just go to a floor drain make sure that tubing is unobstructed uh, of course so hopefully that's been some help thanks